Why do I do this to myself? Why? First it was Hillsfar, now this? I used to play good games, games that were fun and suitably well regarded and received. What sort of mire have I trapped myself within to deserve the torment that is playing these games? <sighs> Heroes of the Lance is a 1988 adventure game released for a million different platforms that prominently features several characters from the Dragonlance series of novels written by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Specifically, it sees the player take control of the party to delve into Zach Saroth in search of the Discs of Mishakal, facing off against the denizens of the ruins, including the dragon Kassanth, along the way. It was developed by US Gold with some help from, surprise surprise, Strategic Simulations Incorporated, who also handled the publishing. And it's absolutely terrible. What little I've had the chance to show on screen so far is everything that this game is. It's a bland, repetitive, side-scrolling adventure game that looks like it was drawn by a four-year-old. It's all of about 25 minutes long, and even within that context struggles to keep the attention of whomever is unfortunate enough to spend their time playing it. The sound design is like nails on a chalkboard, and the game's main mechanic, being a point system earned through killing enemies and collecting gold and loot, is, pun intended, pointless. Your goal, as you can probably imagine, is to get through the labyrinth that is Zack Seroth. While shuffling from screen to screen, you'll be forced to parlay with a number of enemies, such as Man, Troll, and your last one-night stand. When you get close enough, the game says combat and lets you mash the keypad to swing your sword at them. They eventually die, and you move on. Along the way, you can find potions and scrolls that you probably won't use, and even rings that, when equipped, make you feel more confident. Apparently. There's no puzzles, no story within the game itself, and no real D&D to be savored. You play as one of the party at a time, with the ability to switch between any of the eight at will. That might sound cool until you realize that it doesn't actually matter who you play as. See, Tanis, Karaman, Riverwind, Sturm, and Flint all play identically in the sense that they're all fighter characters who run up to enemies and whack them with whatever weapons they wield. Rastlin and Goldmoon, being a wizard and cleric respectively, can cast spells so long as they're in the front row. And Tasselhoff, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what he does. He's a thief in the story, so I would assume he's supposed to be one here, but I just turned him into a pack mule for all the items I didn't think were important, because for some reason characters have encumbrance limits. Because that's definitely something this game needed. Everyone can take damage from an enemy attack, but whoever's in the lead takes the brunt of it, meaning while you'll want Rastlin and Goldmoon in the front so that you can use their spells, both to deal with enemies and heal after combat, you never actually want to actively play as them, because the first edition dice tables used here have suitably ensured that a stiff breeze is enough to kill them. Honestly, the only time I ever played as Rastlin specifically was when I needed him to space glide over pits, which he can do, for some reason. This means that the gameplay boils down as such. You play as one of the five fighter characters and aimlessly run through the halls until you, probably by sheer luck, find the way forward, which is usually denoted by the distant ringing of alarm bells. Whatever the hell that means. You rotate through characters as need be, try to rack up your score if you're so inclined for whatever reason, and eventually reach the pale imitation of the source material that is the conclusion. There's no twists or turns, no surprises, just monotony. I'm not even sure how I beat the game, if I'm totally honest with you. I had no idea where I was going most of the time. All the areas looked nearly identical due to the lack of landscapes and colors. Eventually, I walked through a portal, cast the obvious MacGuffin plot device spell to protect myself from the dragon, threw my stick at him, and found the discs. And this was the end screen that I got for my trouble. <laughs> Might sincerely be the first time I've ever had a game outright tell me to force exit. Heroes of the Lance is living, physical, and irrefutable proof that it is possible to make a mockery of even the most established and beloved works of fiction. It is outright amazing how this game adapts a section of a pre-existing narrative from a work that had been published years beforehand, featuring the exact same characters, and flawlessly manages to not use an ounce of it to enhance the gameplay in any way, shape, or form. Within the game itself are the exact stat lines for each character that were available at the time in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. The manual features detailed artwork and biographies for those characters in question, and a unique crop of enemies, many of them demonic and draconic, that aren't often seen in more typical adventures. 
and none of that matters in the context of the actual gameplay. It's all the same. Who's running around on screen changes, but nothing else does. Even the few differences between the characters, such as the fact that Sturm is such a himbo that he refuses to use a ranged weapon, or that most enemy projectiles straight up miss Flint on account of his shorter stature, which I, I can't imagine was intentional, but I was more than happy to abuse, are largely superficial. It almost makes you wonder why they bothered to implement them in the first place. You deal with every enemy the same way, and the only real difference between enemies is how many hits they take before they eventually explode and get out of your way. Christ, this is painful. And it's not like the game is well designed either. The controls are clunky, you basically have to run at all times, because if you don't, the rubble constantly falling from the ceiling will land on your head, and sometimes still does anyway, and this menu, which you're constantly navigating in and out of, is just a treat. It's also worth pointing out that, unless you're going to do some pretty heavy remapping on a keyboard, this is all done on a traditional numpad. Was commonplace back in 1988, but a lot of keyboards nowadays don't have them, so maybe something to consider if, for some reason, you still have an interest in buying this dumpster fire of a game even after getting this far into this video. The one thing that stops me from proclaiming this game is worse than Hillsfar is the fact that some of the other releases of the game, such as the NES version on screen now, are clearly a fair bit better. The graphics are generally more pleasant, and many of them also feature some admittedly bumpin' music. And while I don't think the source material nor the Dungeons & Dragons license is used in any meaningful way here, it is at least kind of what you would expect from a title of this ilk. You are exploring and fighting monsters, as boring and brainless as it is, which is more than could have been said in Hillsfar. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel here, but not quite at the bottom, you feel me? If there's any credit that I can give Heroes of the Lance, I do think it tries. I don't think this is a game that is dull or bland because of a tangible lack of effort. The massive manual and other assorted materials are proof of what went into this endeavor. But whether due to the limitations of the time, or what resources US Gold and SSI had at their disposal, this game has aged about as well as milk on a hot summer day, or NFTs. The gameplay could be called facile, these characters could have been literally anyone, and staring at it for any extended length of time might qualify as torture for the eyes. As a whole, the silver box games which Heroes of the Lance is within a collection of are pretty bad. Their D&D games made well before video game adaptations of the license had really been ironed out. They have some historical significance, they're a curious bunch for sure, but they're not much to write home about on their own merit. Whatever you do, don't play Heroes of the Lance, and if you do, don't say that I didn't warn you.